All right. Uh, hopefully this could help solve some other people's LS swap nightmares. Uh, biggest problem was hard start issues. I thought I had it figured out after I painted the car until I started driving it, and I took it to my house and it wouldn't start up again. And uh, what would happen is the starter couldn't physically turn over the motor. It would just become hard. And before that, I thought I had it solved. I thought the starter was just getting hot, so first I thought it was a starter issue, so I bought a starter, one. Uh, then I thought it was getting super hot because of the long tube headers running down the car. And so I decided I'll get a Summit starter blanket, which should help. And uh, it did a little bit. And then I took the headers out and I header wrapped them, which is also good because the other side has the fuel lines running through it and near it. So that helps it a lot. And then I also for the fuel lines, I put another heat shield on them too, but for the starter, so I still had the same issue, it was slightly better, and then uh, I ran an extra ground from the starter to my block, I have like a ground block there, and then the ground block goes all the way to the battery, and then the battery also grounds to the shock tower out back too. Um, so the grounds are fine, and then I, re I put two grounds, one one on each head to the extra shock towers and I figured it was a grounding issue because I kept asking people diagnosing it and they're like oh it's a ground problem it's a ground problem and then once I took care of that everyone's oh it's a it's a power wire it's a power wire and everybody just hung up on on that so the power wire runs from there to the inside the dash there's a switch and from there it runs all the way out and around to the factory red jump block and that ran underneath the car to the starter and uh, so I did was I ran it right to the starter shortened the wire up that much shorter four or five feet of wire it was thick gauge wire and it's a thick strand so it was uh, totally able to handle the volts and the amperage and all that so then I ran the same wire that went around to the block over there that feeds the fuse box for the factory car and the alternator and everything else on the other side so it's just another wire that goes from there, and then it's just a lot shorter from the battery to the starter. So I started driving it after I painted it, and I thought I had it solved after that. It started a little bit better, and I couldn't figure it out. A little backstory in the car. It's a 150,000 mile motor. It's a 5.3. The only thing done to it is pack 12, 18 springs, uh, valve springs. Uh, they're single beehive. They're, they can handle the lift of the cam, which is a uh, Texas Speed Torker V2. Um, 232, 234, 600, 600 lift. Um, so there's not much there. So I kept figuring it out. So I jacked the car up and I found one of the positive wires was touching the starter blanket, which has an aluminum coating or a metal coating on the outside, and that was grounding out. So I'm like, oh, I totally solved the problem. And I'll insert that clip here where you can see the fucking voltage just arcing off everything. Looking at the starter. You can see that clear as fucking day. What the fuck? I think that might be the issue. So then, uh... Oh, I totally solved the problem. So then, I couldn't figure it out anymore. And, and I got the idea, I'll take some jumper cables, and I have another battery over here, and I'll just jump the starter. Okay. Car starts fine when it's cold. The starter, I'll crank it, that's fine. Once it gets hot, the motor can't turn over. So I'm still thinking heat soak on the starter. And I'm like, let me eliminate it. So I hook the jumper cables up directly to the to the starter with a good battery. And the starter cannot physically turn the motor over. It's exactly the same as when I turn a key in the car. So that eliminates any wiring in the car or anything like that. Starter physically can't turn it over. So I said, screw it. And I grab this. My 16 inch ratchet, step on ratchet, and uh, and a 19 millimeter, no, 24 millimeter, and I try to turn the crank over. So I'm like, okay, the motor should turn over like any other motor. That's not the case. The motor is physically tight, it feels like it's locked up. So I'm like, that's fucking weird, why would it do that? Uh, so I have no idea. I'm like, the only thing's done to it is a cam. So I pull the valve covers off, disabled rockers. Motor's still tight. Pull out 
six spark plugs are the easiest ones to get to. And the motor turns over beautiful. And uh, once it hits a compression stroke on those two cylinders, I left the spark plugs in. I left those in because they're really hard to get to. And uh, the motor feels like it's tight again, locked up, locked up. I have to pull it past it with all my with all my strength, two hands on the ratchet. It's a pain in the ass. So I decided to take it apart even further, pull the timing cover off, and lo and behold, I put the cam in two years ago, and then I put the motor in the car, and it didn't run. And you just accumulating parts, lost interest in it for a little bit. Uh, at one point, I was hurt and didn't, couldn't work on it, and uh, there's a lot of issues. So I don't know how I fucked it up. The bottom cam gear, if you put it at 6 o'clock, or at 12 o'clock, okay, and then the cam is supposed to be dot to dot at 6 o'clock. So 12 o'clock to 6 o'clock. I was one tooth off this way, so the cam was retarded. So what that was doing was holding the, the valves open longer on the compression stroke, so it was giving it more compression than it was supposed to have so I swapped the cam gear and I, I lined it up timed it and I also got with the cam that big I should have got push rods from the start but uh, bought a push rod checker and then I ordered 7.4 push rods on this cam so that was fine put it all back together the motor is still physically tight to turn over and I was posted on a couple pages LS pages on Facebook and on the forums and they're saying the cam will be, it'll be tighter with the cam in it. So I'm like, okay, that makes sense. It should be a little bit tighter. And it's totally not as tight as it was when the cam gear was screwed up. So if you have a cam in your car and it has a hot starting problem or even a starting problem in general, I would totally check the, the cam gears. And I'll insert a picture somewhere showing how off I was and that the car starts better. So now my only problem is that the... Uh, it's not putting out enough voltage from the alternator, so I got a new, uh, it was a Reman alternator I bought new from Napa. It doesn't work, just put another one in now. It's still charging at 12.5 volts, 11.8 or 12 volts when the electric fan is on, so this is totally not good. So I think I'm going to get a brand new one that's not a Reman, and if that doesn't work, I'm just going to get one from somewhere else because, I mean, it should be charging closer to 14. So I think that's my last problem, uh, and I also have a video I'll post in here too, of it turning off. You can hear, hear it want to struggle, and then it starts. Before, it would struggle like that, and then it would stay like that, and it would never start. So, it would just like, the starter would just like barely quarter turn the motor, and, just, er, 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 and then now all of a sudden, it'll grab and start, which is awesome Like it's hot, because if you stall the car out or something like that, you'll never get it back running again. Once I get the alternator in there, it should just work, finally, hopefully. So, once I get the alternator in there, I have more voltage for the battery, and that will turn the motor over, turn the starter over, and that should fix it. That's what I'm hoping.